Okay, good morning, afternoon, and or evening, everyone, depending on where you're at. My name is Bob Woods. I am a social business strategist at PeopleLinx and vice president, executive vice president at Social Sales Link. Uh, I am a LinkedIn coach, trainer, author, speaker, raconteur, or whatever I was to say. I don't know. Uh, and welcome to Social Selling Wednesday. Um, Ted, uh, Michael, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourselves? Go ahead, Michael. Thanks, Ted. Uh, my name is Michael De Groot, StayingAliveUK.com. I'm a storyteller, and I help you with your LinkedIn social selling and to help you share stories through whiteboard animation. That's me. Excellent, and it's and it's truly excellent stuff what he does too. I've seen him Thank doing some you. stuff. We're working on, on on something with him right now on a project that we keep hinting at that we're going to be able to announce here pretty quick, but it's fantastic stuff. So Ted, go ahead. I'm Chad Pedromo, author of Ultimate Guide to LinkedIn for Business and Ultimate Guide to Twitter for Business. And I help people with social selling and LinkedIn and all that online stuff that they don't like to do. <laughs> yeah, but by the time you're done with them, and by the time we're all done with them, they love to do it because exactly. it's money in their pockets. Or we do that for them. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, um, just actually a bit of a warning here. Um, I may be getting a call from my cable company at any point in time because, and I also may be disconnected unknowingly and unwittingly because of cable service here. So I may have to dip out for just a minute. Um, and I may be forced to dip out for just a minute, but, um, but anyhow, so if I go away, you know why. Um, so with that in mind for everyone who is on the blab, we have a couple ways to communicate. You can send us a, um, a message in the live chat. You can ask a question as well. You would type slash Q in the chat and then your question, as well as we have one open seat available. You can go ahead and take that seat. You don't have to show yourself. You can just be audio only. And we uh, and we'll converse with you and answer your questions and uh, just blab, as the site name says, blab about social selling LinkedIn and those types of topics. So, with that in mind, who wants to go first with their with their topics today? Look at all those hands go up. Yeah, go Ted, ahead, why Michael. don't you go first? Oh, okay, I guess go. Michael. Okay, go. Okay, go ahead, Ted. Well, I just we were talking a few minutes ago, and mm -hmm. the question I get almost every day is. What's working on LinkedIn right now or social media even in general? So what's working for you guys on LinkedIn especially? Um, I'll, I'll go with that first. I think um, what's been what's been working most for me, especially because I've been uh, I've been I've been really busy with uh, with with people links related stuff lately. So I haven't had a lot of time to write articles. I normally write articles uh, uh, once a week. I don't think I've published in a month now. So um, so so yeah, I know. Oh my God. So so it's so it's been a little while since I published an article, but I'm still more than maintaining my presence on LinkedIn and that's through um, using what I've uh, talked about here in the past with my um, with with my unpublisher strategy which is basically liking sharing and and commenting and and just making sure that my name stays out there even though I am not um, actually really publishing anything and uh, and quite frankly the more that I do this the more that I'm thinking to myself you know I may I may actually cut back on the article writing a little bit here especially because I've got like 50 or so articles on on LinkedIn already so so I've got a good library to pull from but um, but 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 just in terms of making connections, conversing with people, and and, and really pushing uh, the brands that I have and everything else, just liking and sharing, and then when I'm liking and sharing, well, well, not with like so much, but with sharing and with commenting, as long as you're adding value to what you are sharing or commenting on, you're gonna, you'll, you'll have a much better chance of engaging with others. So, I mean, a basic like definitely works, but if you make a comment about an article, if you ask a question about an article, if you're commenting in a comment stream about somebody else's article, adding value is the key to really building your brand and building yourself in that top of mind type of, uh, of, of framework that you want people to think of you as. So that's what's working for me. 
Yeah, that's funny. I was working with a client yesterday and we we're showing him groups, how to join groups and how to interact with people. And yep, we found same thing there. They had 532 new conversations yesterday alone. So I'm thinking, oh, this is a great wow. group. This is awesome. So we started scrolling through and we probably went through the first hundred conversations that were posted. Mm -hmm. They were, there was not one comment, not one like, oh. not one share. It was all just people blasting content. Mm. People are still teaching that they have software even that they sell that they yeah. just blast all your content into the groups every single day over and over and over. Like, I'm guilty of that. I mean, when when I first started, I was definitely guilty of that, and then and then I learned pretty quickly that you you really need to participate in in the groups. It's almost like buying quote unquote your way into groups by actually commenting and participating fully within the group. And then it, it, in my mind, you kind of earn that right to start sharing your own content at that point. Well, the moderators could flag you too. And spamming. that's the other thing. And that's the other thing. That's a painful penalty. <laughs> it's a very painful penalty indeed. Indeed. Yeah. I, I, in terms of groups, I probably jump into groups and have a look and see what's going on maybe twice a week. That's all, not even daily anymore. And I only look on my on the LinkedIn group app because it's really mm -hmm. quick to have a look and see what's new. And because the groups that I'm in are quite similar, um, the same content, somebody's just blasted the same content in all of the groups they belong to. So I see the mm -hmm. same content being put in multiple, like 10 groups in the same bit of content being blasted there. And I'm yeah. just thinking, uh, Oh my God, you know, yeah. it's not interesting to be inside groups anymore because there is no conversation going on. There's, there's nobody having a conversation. Now, part of that is down to, you know, the way it, it behaves nowadays that with the updates, but a lot of it is down to people just thinking that's how they're going to get seen. Right. So, well, the top, I, don't even, I don't even see that many comments against those posts either. <laughs> you know? Some of the most popular LinkedIn courses out there right now are still teaching that method. And yeah. some of them even have their own software now that helps you blast that content. Oh, Oof. my God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah so, well, I mean, I, t I tell you a couple of things that, are, that I've noticed that are working for me. <clears throat> um, the article writing, the Pulse article, has gathered a bit more momentum for me than it did early in the early days. I know some people are saying it's actually gone worse, but some of the views that I'm getting and the engagement, I'm, I'm reasonably happy with, and there's some meaningful <laughs> conversations taking place. That's good. And what's also great is being able to see where people are coming from. Um, so, you know, where have they come from to see your content? And that's down to you know, having a clever tag on your article uh, mm -hmm. and hopefully being pulled into that particular Pulse channel. So social media as a tag seems to be quite a useful one to get noticed. So I would highly recommend, even if your article is about social media, <laughs> include it to, to get seen on that channel. So yeah. th there's been some people coming. So to me, that's <laughs> suggesting that you know, articles are being seen somewhere uh, and people are coming to it. The other couple of things that I noticed were really positive about LinkedIn is some updates on the app that came through in the last few weeks. You know, the first one, and you guys already know about it, but in case people are listening, they may not necessarily know that the contact details are now visible for the individual. And yep. actually clicking on those contact details they work, you know, so if you click on the phone number, it works. If you click on the links, they work. So it actually works properly. So that's really positive. The other thing I noticed, and I don't know if you ever saw that, but if you wanted to look at somebody's profile, even if you looked at your own profile on the app, there was like a five to 10 second delay before you could actually thumb through the profile. That's mm -hmm. now almost instant now. There's, there maybe it's a lot, like a short second or so. Yeah, latency's before definitely can, improved. Before yeah. you can thumb through the profile. Mm -hmm. But that certainly is an improvement. And I'm, I'm pleased about both of those. Um, 
So I think that's working. And the other thing I noticed as well that privacy and settings on the desktop has now got the same blue, bright, bold uh, user interface like when they updated the help center as well. So yeah, that, that's right. Yeah, that's something new as well that I thought, mm -hmm. yeah, that looks good. It's obviously you can see the handwriting is starting to change into a brighter, fresher, larger site. So I'm looking forward to that filtering through, hopefully in the future to our profiles and everything else too. Yeah. So those yeah. are some things that that definitely been working uh, for me, and actually also linked with that it's still linkedin but people have been tweeting my articles better on twitter so mm -hmm. there's, there's like cross fertilization going across to twitter back to my pulse article so pleased with that too that's good now uh in terms of your twitter coverage uh is is that coming from basically the people who are following you on Twitter? Do you have a good hashtag strategy that, um, you know, that you're getting uh, retweets from, from, from people who aren't necessarily, necessarily your followers? How, how, how is that working for you? How does that work, I guess? Yeah, I, I, I guess uh, people are picking up on the article on LinkedIn and tweeting it direct from there or taking oh. the link and tweeting it in, well, I don't know which way they're doing it, but sure. Okay. It, it kind of looks like they're tweeting it from there. Okay. Um, so they're finding it through pulse and then tweeting it out. Yeah. And these are all new folks and that are That's good. that aren't following me that aren't connected on LinkedIn that aren't following me on Twitter or I'm not following them. So these are some new folks that are definitely have come through and uh, that's been encouraging. Excellent. Good for you. Good for you. That's great news. That is, that is fantastic. Are you tweeting your links to the pulse articles yourself too? Yeah, I have done. Definitely. Yeah, I have. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That works really well for me too. Yeah. The only, the only, uh, only sad thing is that because I use buffer, Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not a sad thing. It's just an extra thing that you've got to do. It doesn't, if you buffer from LinkedIn's Pulse channel, it doesn't pick up the image. It, does, it doesn't pick up anything. And thank you for saying that. That's <clears throat> that's something that I wondered if it was just me because of my lousy internet connection here and there just yeah. wasn't enough time for it to, to, to pick up or, or whatever. So it's not on my end. So, so you're seeing that too. Yeah, that's right. So what... Oh. I, what you, I feel all you've better, got to do is the, the header image in your article, you've just got to upload it. You know, right, yeah. yeah replace the separately. image, which is what I've been doing. Uh, it's just an extra step, but hey, you know, just to get yeah, it out. Yeah, it's there, not it's difficult. Just, it's just one of those, oh, God, I got to do this type of thing. And yet yeah. it takes like 15 seconds to That's truly right. do, you know. So yeah. it's, yeah. Yeah, it's not that big of a deal. And then plus, I mean, uh, you know, to – to actually have that um, image, especially in Twitter, where it's big and bold, where where your tweet, when it appears in other people's timelines, it's big yeah. and bold as opposed to just text. I mean, that 15 or 20 extra seconds of, of making sure that there is a photo in that article just does so much for it, I think. Totally right. Yeah. Totally oh, yeah. Right. The yeah. images make a huge difference. Yeah, they do, because they're huge. Yeah. <laughs> Physically yeah. or electronically huge i guess you'd say yeah yes okay we, we like to click on pictures yes we do we like to see them we like to click on them so cool well with that in mind um what Michael, about ted? what is working for ted oh yeah oh. that's right yeah yeah ted go for it yeah sorry about that i was about ready to jump out no well the real thing is you got to be consistent you know spend some time every day on linkedin last week i was traveling i was offline for four days and my profile views dropped, my interactions have dropped significantly. Yeah, I have. So just do something every day, log in and say happy birthday. That's working like crazy. Yeah, that is amazing. So, and and that's something that I actually wanted to ask you about offline, but because we're here, we, we might as well um, do that real quick. What are you putting in your happy birthday messages? 
Well, my assistant does it for me, to be honest. But <laughs> okay, I mean, I was just wondering if you have like a a a set script because I was thinking about doing that, and and I'm thinking, okay, now how do I say happy birthday, but yet in a professional type of way? And I thought, well, maybe Ted has has like a surefire script that he uses that you know sounds sounds LinkedIn, you know, LinkedIn approved, or whatever you want to say, and yet says happy birthday at the same time. Yeah, she kind of just, they have that template, which is very general. Sure. But she just adds something to that, like, enjoy your day. Okay. Like, make sure you say hi or happy birthday in their first name. Oh, okay. So so it's, like, really brief and really short, but but yet it does get a um, it does get an impression across, basically, at the same time. About 40% of the people reply and send me a message say thank you. That's fantastic. That's ridiculous. That's fantastic. <laughs> okay, I am now going to be officially adding that to my daily uh, LinkedIn duties. That's uh, that's that's fantastic. I I was wondering if you were like going into their profile and like doing a lot of research or, or anything like that, or, or or if you just slap and I mean I shouldn't say slap, but I mean you know you're just putting in a general <laughs> message there basically. So okay, good. So so just general messages is all that it takes. That's that's it very. It starts good. a conversation. Yep. That's what you want to do. The, yep. the great the great one that's had some traction that I've used for the birthday message is mm -hmm. um, it depends when it falls also you know whether they've got a birthday weekend or whatever but I, I usually ask them what was the best thing you've had as a present Ooh, oh that's great <laughs> that's a good one. Because they're going to reply to that. Yeah, yeah they will definitely reply to that. Yeah, that's fantastic, and and that's a really good way to 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 start a conversation. So, so so just in terms of um, reply rates, if you could just put a ballpark figure on it, when when you do that, um, you get like a, a fifty percent reply rate, sixty percent. What, what do you I, think? I, I have to be honest. I haven't measured it. I mean, some people don't respond. They just say thank you and they don't give an answer. So they must have had crap presents. <laughs> uh, but... <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> but some people go, yeah, I've got my new iPhone or uh -huh. I've got a new iPad or, uh -huh. you know, I've got a vacation or whatever it might be or I've got a football. I don't know. It's They're, they're all kind of different. Um, but you know that they're, they're really really interesting that's for okay sure. okay <laughs> that's funny that's good okay good very very good so um so let's 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 move to michael for for his topic of discussion what what he wanted to talk about today ah okay so and and this is this might be boring because people have heard about this so many times but i'm still going to share it and that mm -hmm. is sending invitations and I sent on LinkedIn. We're talking about it's connecting with people on LinkedIn. It's not Facebook and it's not Twitter. It's different. We're in a professional environment. And if you want to do business on LinkedIn, you've got to get in the habit of sending a personalized invitation. There is no excuse on the mobile app. You can send a personalized invitation. You've got to go to the profile, click on the three dots in the top right. And it will ask you then to click through on personalized invite mm -hmm. on the desktop. Likewise, the only difficulty is that if you're in very often when I challenge people why they haven't personalized their invite, mm -hmm. it's because they said they saw me on people you may know page. Right. And when you click the connect button, mm -hmm. the invite just goes out. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that and is valid to a certain extent. I mean, if valid. you don't know that you have to go to the profile either in mobile or on the desktop to really do it. That's I can, right. Yeah, I mean, so that's why when I get the, the generic ones, it's like, okay, maybe, uh, you know, you know, especially if it's a very generic uh, headline that's involved and maybe not even a photo involved. It's like, okay, this person really doesn't know LinkedIn like I know. So, so that's right. Right. And and I I'm not too tough on people, but I if I look at their profile and go, yeah, I'm happy to accept the connection. I do say to them, I send a very nice message back saying thanks for the invitation. Say I'm I'm the curious type. I was wondering what inspired you to connect to me, and then I share my article, which is on inside LinkedIn, which is 
why you should personalize your invite or something like that. I've got a Pulse article there. Mm -hmm. I said, you, you might benefit from having a read of this article. Mm -hmm. um, and very often they do get back to me and say, oh, I'm new to LinkedIn. I didn't know. I, I don't even know where I clicked through to connect to you. Some people even said, I actually connected with you by accident. I'm sorry. Um, but, <laughs> that still happens to me every once in a while. Yeah. But I think we, we've got to ask the question, why should we personalize an invitation? Right? Because that's really why. If people know the why, then they will be motivated to do it. So before I answer my version of the why, I'll put it over to you guys. Why do you think we should personalize it, Ted? Well, it's like if you meet somebody in person and you don't, you don't try to learn their name, you shake their hand and you just kind of don't act like you're engaged, they're not going to want to build a relationship with you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's like um, when, when you get an invite and it's generic, you kind of have to wonder, okay, is this really the person sending it? Is this someone's assistant who just doesn't really care and just uses the, the generic con connect? Is that person sharing it? Is it a bot of some kind? I mean, I don't, I don't know if you have a lot of bots running on, on LinkedIn, like you do on Twitter and places like that. But, um, but, but the, it just doesn't, there's not a lot of care behind it and there's not a lot of thought behind it. So, so as a person receiving something like that, who, who knows about this type of thing, you ask yourself, okay, so is this the, the type of person who is going to care a lot about me in, in, in a conversation or, or whatever, or are they just out connecting or uh, collecting connections like baseball cards, basically. So, yeah. you know, I only want to connect with real quality people. And when I get a generic uh, connection request, I wonder, is this, is just this a quality person? Whereas when I send one, I'm hoping that people will see me as a quality person to connect with because I've taken a little bit of time to maybe suss out one or two things in their profile and then include that in the customized connection. Yeah, great, great. So I don't get too hung up on how they invited me to connect. Okay. I send them a welcome message after I connect. If well, they yeah, think sure. A person. Yep. And I judge who responds to that. Mm. Oh, it starts a conversation. Okay. I could see that too. I can absolutely see that. Because LinkedIn made it hard to send those personalized invitations. Yeah, it is. So. Yeah, it is tough. It is tough. Yeah, that it's, it's where you are, where you click, and right. Interestingly enough, um, on Sales Navigator, which not everybody I know will have access to, mm -hmm. when you click the connect button there, wherever it is, it automatically pops up a personalized invite uh, box. Right. It doesn't just send the standard one out. Right. So Which, there's some inconsistency there in terms of thinking. Now, obviously, they're thinking, well, Sales Navigator, you're building leads. You want to make sure you make a good impression. But why not make a good impression, <laughs> you know, um, on yeah. the standard LinkedIn yep. um, platform too? So right. yeah. for me, the why is that what is that person going to think of you in the first instance? You know, Ted hasn't got a problem. Fine. Um, but Bob said, well, I'm not so sure whether I'll connect to them. I will, will go, I will definitely check them out in depth and try and figure out why right. they might have connected. Yep. If they look legitimate, I will accept and ask them the question, why did you want to connect to me? Yeah. In a nice, friendly way. Um, mm -hmm. So because there might be a really great reason. And I've had some fantastic responses in terms of them saying they love my articles, they like what I'm talking about. So, you know, some great testimonials coming through as a result of it. I think the important thing is that it's first impressions count and that people have to recognize in the same way that you explained, Ted, when you meet somebody face to face at a networking event, and this is virtual networking at the end of the day. You know, you're not going to turn your back to them and then try and shake their hand. You know, you've got to look at them, look them in the eyes, right. shake that's them. Great, yeah, that's, that's a it. great analogy. I love that analogy. <laughs> uh, you, and the you, action you, help too, Ted. That's very good. I really am interested in what you're saying, Michael. That's yes. right. <laughs> <laughs> or this is also the other one people do now. 
oh, as a copy that they pull out oh, yeah. the <laughs> Yes. <laughs> that's funny. Yep. Exactly. Yep. That's exactly right. So, yep. And that it's really, really simple. What impression do you want to leave with that person when you connect with them? Mm -hmm. That's it. You know, yep. in a nutshell. Yep. Okay. Good, good. We're coming up on 26 after the hour. Uh, we're still taking uh, questions. If you have any, use the live chat. If you want to flag it as a question, uh, type slash Q in. Uh, we will answer your question, uh, hopefully, as soon as we see it. And we also have an open seat available if you would like to take that. Um, you could do it uh, via audio or video. We would love to have you in on the conversation. So please join us and let's blab. Let's blab. I wonder if they've trademarked that. Let's blab. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, so my topic for today actually comes from a series of trainings that I've done through people links with, um, probably shouldn't say the company, but let's just say that it's one of the huge, uh, cable television and internet providers here in the U S for their, uh, B2B teams. So these are the people who actually sell connectivity and, uh, services like that to, to businesses. So, um, so what we did was we launched a new part of the PeopleLinks platform to them. I won't go into details about that because I wouldn't need to explain too much about PeopleLinks itself. But basically what it had to do is it with uh, is is using social selling within the pipeline once you get people into the pipeline. So uh, people like Ted, Michael, and, and, and myself, we train a lot on using social selling to take online conversations offline. So now we're assuming that you have had these conversations. You've actually had a meeting with, with someone at the company. So you obviously have a, a, a relationship going with them. So now, um, so now we're talking about using social selling in the funnel. And this is important because I don't know about you guys, but it seems to me like that few people use social selling really well after the lead is in the funnel. And then even fewer people use it well to help close business. So trust me when I say you're going to be way ahead of your competition by using social selling techniques and best practices for contacts at accounts at the um, in, in the funnel, basically. So um, what it all comes down to is just being in front of prospects as you're taking them through to the close. You do that by visual cues, essentially. So um, uh, so that you're branding your company and, and your service to keep you and your proposal at top of mind so that um, so that they're not always thinking about you. You definitely don't want to be obnoxious about this, this, this type of thing. But, you know, at certain times or if you kind of feel like that things are starting to uh, die, you know, just um, use a couple or one of these techniques or a couple or, or whatever to just kind of, you know, nudge people. It's like, you know, Oh, Bob's still out there and he's got a great company and his proposal is, is, is still there. And I'm, um, you know, it, it all depends on how passive versus aggressive you are. I would never suggest being aggressive personally just cause I'm not aggressive, but um, you know um, just, just keeping yourself and your company and your proposal top of line is is how you can take these deals through the funnel and get them to close uh, faster and with a greater success rate. So there's four um, so there's four things that I taught that I'm going to put in in a more generic non people links type type of way. So so the first one is going to be sending a sending contacts a thank you note and follow up collateral. So a lot of people send thank you notes but you can differentiate yourself in the client's eyes by including collateral in your thank you that demonstrates you are listening and shows what you can address for whatever need that you have the uh, proposal out for. So, um, so, so you do that by sending a case study or a white paper, or maybe even just a link to an article or, or something like that, but it de directly links to contacts or clients needs essentially. So there's one insider tip that I had to <laughs> send the thank you note the day after a meeting and time it to arrive during business hours. If you send it immediately after, it's going to create 
the impression that this is just a form letter that you just fire out and 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 it doesn't really matter and don't send it overnight or on weekends either because then it'll get caught up with the rest of the spam and you know how you are first thing in the morning you just want to click through and just get your 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 email box clean and everything else so time it so that it arrives during business hours maybe you know just before or after lunch or or something like that um, for for me personally I know that I'm checking email unless I've got an appointment or something like that between 11 and noon and between four and five so you know whatever you think is the best time for you but that's what I would recommend with that uh, the second thing would be to build a network at a client account so the best way to gain access to decision makers is to start with people you already know um, Many times you may be unaware that you have connections already in your network who are connected to the account. So use advanced search, use the company page, go ahead and um, use those connections to try to uh, connect with more people at, at the account through LinkedIn. And also with Twitter, you don't need to ask permission to be connected to them. So you can just start following people at um, through through Twitter directly too. So you do that, especially with some of the other decision makers who may or may not be involved in, in the decision process for your particular proposal. And as we all know, sometimes there are people involved with the decision process that you don't even know about. Um, as as you go in just make sure that you try to spread your network as far and as wide as possible in, in doing that. Uh, third thing is just advocating for uh, contacts at, at the client by using Twitter and LinkedIn. And that goes to what we uh, what I discussed before with uh, liking, retweeting, and sharing, and commenting. Again, whenever you do this, especially on LinkedIn, um, the person who you are liking, uh, sh sharing, or commenting on is going to receive a notification that you have done that, which is, again, a visual cue that you are still out there, your proposal is still out there, you're kind of going, you know, hey, I'm still here, but you're not really saying, hey, I'm still here. So, um, you know, it's a lot better than those dreaded phone calls that you make when you're saying, you know, I'm just, I'm calling to see how the proposal's going, da, da, da. And <laughs> I hate those calls. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta make them, but a much better way to do that type of thing is to advocate for the client because you're, you're not only kind of doing that in, I, I was going to say sly away. It's not really sly because it sounds underhanded. It's not really underhanded, but you know, just just in a way that says, "Hey, I'm here." While at the same time, because you are liking or you're commenting on the article, um, or, or on the share or, or whatever, your um, that share that you're doing is also shared amongst your network, which means that the person who you're going to is shared amongst your network, and they may even get business out of it too. That's a possibility too. Um, the last tip that I have is um, review and just get Google alerts about news about your clients. Now, this uh, now depending on the size of the company, this may or may not happen. It, it just depends. But signing up for Google news alerts about your clients is huge because if they announce like a, a new client that they have quarterly results. Um, whatever other reasons that a company gets recognition for on the positive side, not necessarily the negative side, but um, you can use that to engage with people as as well. And I would actually do that directly through through email. Um, uh, you can you know like and share that content as well. And maybe you wanna do both. You wanna like it and share it and write just a quick follow-up email, you know, congrats on snaring your hugest client ever or whatever, basically. But again, it's that visual cue that will help you stay top of mind uh, so that they remember about your proposal and, and um, you know, that, that will help things at least um, so that people aren't forgetting about your proposal as you're trying to take things through to the close. So do you find uh, Google Alerts work as well as they used to? Um, you do, you probably have to kind of tweak them and, and, and like I said, it depends on how big the company is. So like, say for example, the cable company that I was talking about, um, I would definitely have to build a really good search string so that I'm just not bombarded with articles that I could care less about. If it's smaller companies, 
you may not have to do as much work about it. If they're really small companies, they're probably not going to get mentioned in, in, in the news at all. So that all just uh, kind of depends on a variety of things. But yet it's just another tool that uh, social sellers have at their disposal that, quite frankly, um, most, if not all of their competitors will not be using. So I can almost guarantee you that everything that I've talked about, uh, your competitors are are very likely not using. So just so just by doing a couple of these things alone, you're already ahead of your competition um, in, in in trying to secure business at your uh, at your prospect. Yeah, it's good to set them up for your name and your company name too to see what ha what the internet's seeing about your company. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah, absolutely. You don't get surprises like oh <laughs> yeah oh god where did that come to yeah exactly so uh yeah it's funny i posted a transcription of a webinar that i did a couple weeks ago uh-huh i just had a pdf that people could download i put it on amazon the s3 oh account. yeah mm -hmm. a google alert came up and found my name associated with that pdf wow it's like wow wow that's really interesting wow that's good i think think you know it's one of know, those situations like, where it's like i think that's good and you kind of think about it, it's like yeah that's probably good but at the same time you kind of wonder oh god what 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 else is out there so yeah doing doing a go google alert about yourself and, and and your company is is probably a very good thing too yeah any comments michael yeah sounds great um uh, there's, there's some good stuff there and it, it depends how deep the pockets are of the, your client or any other company out there because sales navigator of course does help with quite a bit of that company mm -hmm. news yep and also individuals that are mentioned in the news too right yep and so there's been a reasonable amount of that that i've been noticing i've been able to engage with people on that front and that's definitely been quite useful you know in terms of having that kind of discussion Mm -hmm. uh, so that that's pretty cool, but I I agree with all of the things that you've said. Yeah. Um, it comes back to I think what Ted was saying earlier, and it's that dreaded word called consistency. Yes. Um, you know, people have to be consistent with this stuff because what the advice that I give people is twenty minutes per day. Now people don't think they have twenty minutes per day, but if they took the first 20 minutes of the day before they even looked at their own email and did some of this stuff just to do it, you know, just mm -hmm. to kind of do a bit of engagement and make sure they, they actually uh, do that stuff. Mm -hmm. The other thing that may be useful and you guys might already be doing it, but it's, you know, although LinkedIn has reduced the amount of email it sends to us, Mm -hmm. um, so that positive, positive. Uh, <laughs> there is still, there is still a fair amount coming through. Mm -hmm. And if you do some set up some rules on your email and make sure they all go to one folder, yes. then you're able to look at them all in one folder and all of the emails are going backwards and forwards whether somebody's been mentioned in the news or whether somebody's connected to you. Mm -hmm. So you've, you've actually then got your task list in one place, which is yep. your LinkedIn task list. It's not all filtered in all of your emails. And I know, of course, sometimes people do. I don't know how many people are going to use their own devices for work and personal these days, but you know, you could have a whole mixture of email in your inbox. You could have company, personal, whatever. And some people, of course, as we know, don't put their business email address on LinkedIn. They put their private email address on there because they hope to get found by the headhunter uh, for another big job. So th this, this is another thing that people have to be careful about where they're getting all of those emails coming into them. Right. So there's a little bit of, you know, lining up all of the processes so then to make the job quicker and easier. So you can spend just 20 minutes a day, the start of the day, doing all those great tasks that you're suggesting. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, it really doesn't take that long. And I mean, what is the old saying? It takes 20 something days for something to become a habit. So I mean, you know, just push through that first 
20 days. Uh, one, one thing that I do suggest is, is to actually put time in your calendar if you use like Outlook or Sun, Sunrise or whatever in, into your business calendar that other people can see within your company if you have that capability. You know, you don't need to put down exactly what it is. If, if you just want to put block or whatever, that's fine. But block time out for yourself to do that every day. You know, you know, put in a half an hour and if you go 20 minutes, fine. Go grab yourself another cup of coffee or something like that. Just make, sh um, you know, try your best to devote time to this every day. One of the things that we teach at 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 People Links is 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 try to do this stuff all the time, but it's not a big deal if you do, if if life intrudes, if business intrudes or whatever, because because we do want this to build into like a positive type of of action that people go through every day and of course as people do all this stuff and they start seeing more more revenues and and more commissions and everything come coming out of it we hope that it you know kind of sells itself at that point but just that first initial push you really kind of need to concentrate on maybe a little bit more until you start seeing success but once you start seeing success you're going to want to do it more and more i tell you, do you a screenshot of your profile views at the beginning of the day, week and then do one a month later. If you do, you know, be active every day for 20 minutes, mm -hmm. you'll see a huge spike in your profile. Yeah, you will. It's a great idea. It makes you feel good that this is worthwhile. Yep, that's a great idea. Yeah. That's a great idea. You were saying something, Michael? Yeah, I, I, uh, I have a great example by LinkedIn how not to do it. <clears throat> so, okay, it's a, I know it's a negative. It creeped in. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I downloaded an ebook, a really great ebook that LinkedIn produced with images and quotes by Seth Godin. And the images were done by uh, Gaping Void, Hugh McLeod of Gaping Void. Right. Well, Hugh McLeod of Gaping Void, I've been following him for years. I get a daily email with his new, co new kind of um, cartoon. And I download them, I save them, I put them on my Pinterest. And there's some great quotes for business, and I use them in my articles and various other things. Uh, anyway, I downloaded this ebook, and you know, you put your contact details down, and somebody might get in touch. Well, I've been downloading ebooks from LinkedIn for years, and never ever has anybody got in touch with me. This time they did, uh, and they remain nameless. It was somebody from Dublin who got in touch with me via email, right? Fair enough, not via LinkedIn, via email, uh -huh. and said, we noticed you downloaded this, and would you be up for a conversation to check out your marketing uh, and how LinkedIn can support you with marketing? Obviously, she hadn't looked at my profile because she perhaps would have right. known I was involved with LinkedIn, yeah. and I might not need assistance with that. But never, I, I benefit of the doubt, I responded and I said, uh, what I did was I actually invited to connect with her on LinkedIn. And in my personalized invite, I said, thank you for your email, which I've received. Actually, I don't really need any. You could probably see from my profile that I don't need any support with that. Uh, but it's good to have your name because if I come across people who want to do some advert, advertising, right. sponsored updates, or whatever in Europe, mm -hmm. I'll be sure to send them your way. So then yeah. I've got the LinkedIn response from her um, giving me the same message to oh. say, if you need any help with your marketing, uh, da di da di da di da. I went, what? You're not. You... So, and then, so there was a message through LinkedIn. And then another email came through saying, I've been trying to get hold of you, but obviously we've not, we've been missing each other. Rubbish. And the same message again. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah, so, so that's someone who got put into so so you got put into their content marketing cycle and the person who was contacting you didn't bother to go in and take you out of that manually because she's been talking to you already. Yeah, that's that's right. That's just and lack so, of care. So I've just sent I sent an email back, I think it was Friday night or something, saying Monday morning, thank you so much. Just to remind you that I, I actually cannot find my original personalized invite because we can't see those anymore. So uh, I don't remember the exact words I used, but I said something like this, which is, you don't need to speak to me. I'm not, I'm not your right prospect for right, you. Right, yeah. You yeah. know, go and yeah, find I'm somebody else. 
I'm trying uh, to help you to not waste time and resources on me. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Needless to say, I haven't had a response back to that one yet. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there are some companies that think that they get it and they really don't get it. And that's and that's a prime example of that, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And so LinkedIn failed in their own social selling methods because <sighs> If she had read my personalized invitation, she would have gone, great to connect with you, success with what you're doing. And what she would have done is connected with me and did some likes on my post, you know, she shared my articles, did something, you know, around me so that make me feel good <laughs> about mm -hmm. myself. And, um, but she missed that opportunity. So they themselves need some training, Bob. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe, um, maybe that's a good opportunity for you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or all of us or something like that. I don't know. Uh, so, uh, definitely for the new group for sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. It's just, um, yeah, I've, I've, I've had a couple of content marketing horror stories, my, myself with people trying to contact me and I keep, and I keep you know, along the lines of, of what you're, you're talking about, basically, you know, actual marketers. And it's like, people suck at this. You don't, if, if, if this is how you would serve me in content marketing by not listening when a potential prospect contacts you back and says, you know, I know what you do and you no, know, this really isn't good for me. I don't want to hire you. I mean, not only do I not want to hire you just because I don't want to hire you, I couldn't even recommend you for somebody else because your performance has been so poor yeah. with dealing with me, basically. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's kind of like the web developers that have a horrible website themselves. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I have seen plenty of those as well. I mean, it's like if there's, you know, so the content may not be great on there, but if, it, but, but if the site doesn't look good, if, if their, if their contact form doesn't work or worse yet, they don't have a contact <laughs> form, which I've seen that too. You know, I mean, just real basic stuff. It's like, um, you know, Do you know what, what we call this in England? You, you may have the same saying in um, in the U.S. Uh -huh. We call this eating your own dog food. Uh, I I I have heard that phrase before. And, <laughs> or and, cat food. Uh, I'm not. Yeah, exactly. I'm not, you know, right. whatever cat food, dog food, whatever. But yeah, you got to eat your own. You know, take your own medicine sometimes. Right. Walk the walk and talk the talk is is, is, is probably is what we call it over here. But um, yeah, definitely. Okay. Okay. Very good. Well, it's 40, it's 1148. Uh, I don't see anybody else uh, chiming in here. So I think that we are going to go ahead and wrap things up, if that's okay with you, gentlemen, unless there's something else you'd like to discuss. That's no, I'm good. Dead silence means that we're I think we are done here. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we're staying positive. E exactly. So we want to thank everyone who has who has joined us. The, uh, the, the reap. oh, Michael just went audio. Okay, but you're still there, Michael. Let's see. I am, I am. <clears throat> I okay, good. So, um, I can, yeah. I'm still oh, on I camera. Did. Oh, oh, so, so when audio only on my side, that's, that's those cable problems oh, I was talking yeah. about. In fact, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm really surprised <laughs> that, that I haven't been interrupted here so far. So, um, anyhow, for, for Ted and Michael, I'm Bob. Thanks for joining us on Social Selling Wednesday. We are here every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific uh, 4 p.m. 4 p.m. Uh, Great Britain time and That's everything right. else. That's right. As, yeah, I can. Um, yeah, uh, in a job a very long time ago, I I dealt with people who were in the UK, so uh, okay. so I can usually make make that transition at, at least pretty well. So um, well thanks everyone for joining us, and we will see you next week. Bye, Bye for now. Bye.